It's the day after Christmas. In Sydney, the temperature's in the 90s. The humidity is so oppressive that if you scratch your elbow, you break out in a sweat. The buildings are empty, the shops closed up till the new year, and the cars stream across the bridge heading for the North Shore beaches. But every year at this time, the trad jazzmen are heading into town for their annual convention, a solid week of traditional jazz in its many forms. It's been going on now ever since the first convention in Melbourne in 1946. This, then, is the 20th. Further over there to the left, you can't see it, is where they're building the new opera house. A week ago, the first concert ever was held there to raise funds for the convention. Let's look in through a chink in the concrete sails to where Eric Richards' ill-chosen seven are playing Who's It? Now this is Canal Street Blues.
But let's get back to the convention. It's early morning in Surrey Hills where the first of the musos, the dedicated few, are filling in time before the pub opens. As ever, it's the Railways Institute Hall. Not exactly the Paris end of town, but the acoustics are good, if you're a train enthusiast. Like Muslims to Mecca, the jazz buffs make their annual trek to whichever city is playing host that year. There are already 79 bands registered this year, a couple of hundred musicians. Fancy meeting you here. Does the old bones the power of good? And we've heard all about this mob. starts off with a procession. Always a bit ragged, but it gets everyone together and lets the locals know that there's a convention in town. Oh, there's Clary over there. And Arca. Looks like he's putting on a bit of weight. park where you keep blowing if you can and if you can't you just flake out and watch the birds. <coughs> that afternoon it was down to the Coogee Bay Hotel to fraternize generally, wet the lips and have a blow. Warm salty air blew in off the surf. The cans popped, the elbows bent, and we heard some of the good old good ones.
Back of the Institute, it was much the same. Suck the froth and have a blow. The next day, Alton Purnell played the blues. For the first time in 20 years of conventions, we have with us one of the authentic New Orleans originators. Alton Purnell was born in the Crescent City at the turn of the century and grew up there playing with all the legendary names of jazz, Chris Kelly, Alphonse Picou, Buddy Petit amongst them. In 1945, he joined the Bunk Johnson Band, later led by George Lewis. Murray Garbutt, Louis Russell type band with You Rascal You.
in my home. You wouldn't leave my wife alone. I'll be glad when you're dead. Rest with you. Rest you. Oh, did I call on Sally Green? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did she bow? She was single. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When a man came in the black and he mattered, who is that? Did I leave without my hat? Yes, sir. Next day, we set off across the harbour by ferry for the Clifton Gardens Hotel, where there's been laying in a good cellar. You could stay up on deck, take in the air and a few snorts, or go downstairs where two or three scratch groups were playing. There go some yachts. All the best jazz films have yachts in them.
there we are in the distance, one of the finest watering places on the harbour. Wasn't it worth waiting for? Onto the pier, all form up and march the whole way. After a few hours, it's time to be getting back. The sun is going down like a plum over the bridge and there's a big concert to be organised tonight. went on like this for a solid week. This is midnight at the Brooklyn Hotel and they're still at it. Old friends, new faces and others having a few snorts to music. My God, it wasn't half hot in here. in the original tunes competition. Yes, Nick Polites won that. Or the Waterie Do, or the New Year's Revel at Lansdale, or Graham Bell, or the original Australian Washboard Whackers. Maybe not. Anyway, by New Year's Day it was all over and everyone went home again.
hold it. Try it without the mute, Dave. fitting tribute to those who helped start it all. Uh -huh. And here's the great moment they've all been waiting for. Oh, yeah. Appearing at the 25th Annual Australian Jazz Convention, the original Graham Bell Australian Jazz Band.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Clark Terry. A few years back, a couple of people such as Jimmy Heath and Donald Byrd and Kenny Dorham uh, used as a vehicle for improvisation a segment of Freddie Gouffet's Grand Canyon Suite with a simple bit of change along the way. Uh, we'll give you our version of uh, the segment of Freddie Gouffet's Grand Canyon Suite, which we refer to in jazz as On the Trail, On the Trail. <laughs>
left his dick for a hole in a fence. What he failed to observe was old Cedric, the perv, backed up behind an old tent. <laughs> Always rode around in a little Austin. Just that room for his ass. Two gallons of gas. So his balls fell out and he lost them. from Gisselhurst, when wanted to pee, had to whistle first. When one dull afternoon, he forgot the tune. His whistle burst. This place. Two dozen hamburgers. Hold it, hold it. Sorry, that's the. Uh, do you reckon we could try the middle, yes. middle bit again? Ba da ba wa, ba da ba wa, ba da ba. What? I'd like to take a minute to pay tribute to the band which I just heard, the fantastic big band. And believe me, I've heard a lot of big bands in a lot of parts of the world, and it's a good band, believe me when I tell you. Excellent band. Stay there.
Thank you very much. What do you think of the convention? Fantastic. Uh, weather is most marvelous, too. <laughs> Everything is beautiful. It's a little long time since I had a nice breath of fresh air like this. Nice surroundings. Beautiful. I think I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> Wake me up in about 10 years. It'd <laughs> 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 uh, be beautiful, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be, right? Thanks, Mike. Okay. <laughs> The hymn, the hymn. Thank <laughs> you. 
The Australian Jazz Convention has been held every year for 31 years. The people here say it's unlike the world's other jazz conventions. The music is part of the reason for being here, but the atmosphere in which the music is played is perhaps as important. At the Australian Jazz Convention, amateur musicians can mix and even play with the country's best, jamming, drinking beer and having a good time with the good time music. These people are not jamming. They are the Good Time Washboard Band, one of the finest groups around and thought by many to be Sydney's best jazz band. Jazz was at a high point in the 50s, and it's never been the same since. There are signs, though, that things are slowly recovering. Adrian Ford, you're a piano player. How strong is Australian jazz? It's very strong at the moment, and getting stronger. A lot of people would be surprised at that. Well, I, I find I'm working about four nights a week at present. I don't think it's really done a great deal to promote jazz in Australia. It, I mean, it's a jazz convention. It's for people who play jazz, and uh, want to get together at Christmas time and have a good time and play and drink. And uh, <laughs> uh, I guess it would introduce people to jazz, but that's not its prime aim at all. You know, it's, it's, it's aimed at uh, people getting together and having a good time playing. There's a lot of people here who get together once a year, you know, and that, that's the only time they see each other. They play for that whole week. 
That's great. Adrian, as a musician, what do you think that the Australian Jazz Convention has done for Australian jazz? Well, I think it's stopped, started a lot of musicians playing who never would have started otherwise. That's, people can see that they can just come along and learn an instrument and join in and, and they'll be accepted. Some of these jazz people are almost aggressively non-commercial. There's almost a visible wince at the mention of money. There's not really big money anyway in jazz, even for the best. In fact, there can only be one explanation for all these people leaving their homes at Christmas time to be in Brisbane for the jazz convention. They must like jazz music. Frank, you have been associated with the jazz convention since its inception. It's now 31 years later. Did you think it would evolve into what this convention's erupted into being? Well, I suppose the spirit of the convention was always there. And the very first convention was very much like this in spirit. Perhaps not in venue and style. Uh, so I really didn't think that it was going to do anything else but become like this, because this is what it actually was. But all the sort of things like importations and having Milam Hayes, they were miles away from me. <laughs> How big are you? Well, brothers and sisters, my check is found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Our genius is a revelation somewhere. And it's all about that moon and the, and that moon. And that's going to be a great change. The father and the son going to be sitting on the throne that morning. And I imagine I can hear the angels all around the throne Say, oh, what's the matter this morning? Just about that time, I imagine I can see the father Go down and call old Gable Oh, Gable, I want you to go down this morning I want you to place one foot on the land and the other on the sea I want you to blow that silver trumpet calm and easy I don't want you to know I'm my people because they once been walking in hard to wake again. I bet you I can see old Gable go down and take that silver trumpet, obey his father's commandments. I bet you I can see him place one foot on the land and the other on the sea. I bet you I can see him bust the bell of that trumpet wide open. And his saints gonna meet the father now. Let us pray, saint. Not only slaves see life as a ceaseless struggle. Not only slaves need the assurance that someone cares or that life has purpose. As one of the old musicians said, don't look to the left or the right, but toil uncomplainingly as God would want you to, and in the end you will be rewarded. So it is enormously appropriate that one of the first great events of this 31st Australian Jazz Convention should take place in this cathedral. And thanks be to God for it especially at a season when we give thanks for that event which begins God's decisive acts in history to bring man back to himself as he comes into our midst in the Christ child, Jesus the Christ. Let us see this service as an act of thanksgiving for all those gone before us who have given us so much in the making of a music which reaches the deepest recesses of our hearts. And may God bless this great convention and all the celebrations of the week to come.
that's John Cox, our banjo there, ladies and gentlemen. We got him. Did you think it would last? Yes, I was positive it would last. Because everybody had such a good time, because they all got together, and there was such a spirit of sort of jazz fraternity, you know. Meeting guys that you didn't know, having a chance to blow with them and uh, propagate various uh, musical ideas. The conventions have been a tremendous catalyst in the um, formation of a national identity as far as Australian jazz is concerned. Do you really think they have oh, thrown out musicians? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. No question at all. Smack of Fitz Given, uh, when I was staying down there one time and I was about, um, I suppose, about 22. I said, oh, you want to come and have a list of this bunch of guys who are playing? Uh, they're not very good, but they're practicing. And it was down in the Fun Palace, <laughs> whatever that means, <laughs> at uh, Morty Alec. And uh, here I go, and lo and behold, there's the Bernard Brothers and Titch Bray, plus various assorted fellows, and they're all grunting and groaning away. And I said, Oh, that's tremendous. Why don't you come to the convention? And they did, and it was that. <laughs> Is that how it happened? Yeah. Oh, goodness. The guest artists for the night are uh, Bob Bernard and Dick Kerry. I'd like, first of all, to introduce one of the world's leading trumpet players, our own Bob Bernard. <laughs> our guest for the convention from Los Angeles, pianist and alto horn player, alto trumpet player, Dick Kerry. In California, uh, you say there's not much out there for jazz. No, there's no... Uh, California, they aren't hiring jazz bands. The kind of music I played all my life. There's, there's no need for it. Not with discotheques and rock and roll. and uh, Television keeps people home. So, when you see something like this, even though it's amateurish, do you think it pretends for a... Well, I think, ama I think amateurs have a lot more fun than professionals anyway. But this is this is a job most of the time, and when you're young, you get a lot of pleasure out of playing. And as you get older, the those marvelous little parts where everything goes just perfect, they, they get rarer and rarer because it's your job. But when you're young, they, they happen a lot, especially when you can drink more, which I used to do, <laughs> and I had to give it up. How's the market going for you? It's, it's, I think it's always going to be a struggle. Mm. You know, no one's ever going to come and hand it to you. It's going to be going to have to fight for every inch. But well, I, uh, you know, I'm stuck with it. I've got to fight for every inch now. I was very impressed last night with that turnout at the mine hall. Hundreds of people outside, and the place was packed inside. And uh, it's something we wouldn't dream of in Los Angeles. Out of the question there.
jazz convention started, did you think that Australian jazz per se would retain an Australian character? Or has it retained? Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a curly one. They say overseas that you can smell the gum leaves, with, uh, but uh, when you're doing it, you don't realise this, of course. I, I think everyone picks out the sort of jazz that he likes best. And uh, my cup of tea's always been small group music, as you know. And, uh, and to that, I, I think we must have added a little chapter to the uh, history of jazz in, in that regard, if nothing else. I find that uh, people like Neville Stribling and myself were happier in that idiom. Which one? Bill Wind. Bill Wind, ah. Oh, it's a funny thing, we, uh, we were doing a recording session in uh, Melbourne with uh, Lockie Thompson and uh, he said what about some originals and uh, I think I wrote it out on the back of an envelope while we were tuning up. So uh, I'll await results and hear what it sounds like.
Bruce Johnson, the trumpet. Listen, can we can we do letter from letter G the second time
Nick, when you were at the first convention, who did you play with? This was 1946. Um, Alan Knight was on piano. Stewie Spears, the great rock king, was on drums. Um, Manny Pappas was the trumpet player. He's since died. Um, we thought we were Christmas playing uh, at the, the jazz convention. When you think of the first convention and look around you now, what do you think? Well, the best thing is uh, that 31 years later, uh, the main uh, ideas that were uh, developed in that first convention have been uh, kept and maintained. The, uh, the idea that uh, people come along of all different standards of uh, playing ability, but uh, they mix and uh, play together and uh, have a good time and the younger ones learn and uh, the older ones uh, hopefully uh, try to help them um, in a, a very good amateur spirit which is uh, far away different from uh, most uh, jazz festivals around the world where it's uh, pretty well straight from Russia.